Scott Pendlebury with us. Oh, Pendles. The charge yeah. continues. Here he is. It does. It's exciting. Very it is exciting. exciting. Um, as a neutral observer, it's very yeah. exciting. Um, what a first quarter from you. 11 touches. Just captained your way through that beautifully. Yeah, it's always nice to um, get your hands on the ball early and get involved in the game. Wasn't sure it was going to be our way. I think I got the first handball of the game out to Geordie and it bounced sideways straight back to Freo. And I thought, oh, no, oh, please don't be a illustration of what, what's about to happen. But, yeah, we started really well as a group. And um, kicking straight makes a big difference too, like four straight. I think we'll six straight at one straight, one stage. And it just puts – you just capitalise on your chances and it puts the pressure mm. back on them. You're such a fantastic leader at that club and such a great footballer. How do you think people see you in terms of your skill set? What do you reckon people think is your strongest suit? Oh, I've, that's a good question. Yeah, I've never good. been asked. That's pretty deep for a Monday morning. <laughs> um, <laughs> because I I was sitting here being reminded of how wonderful a kick you are, yep. um, amongst other things, yep. like getting your head over it, obviously, <laughs> and going hard at it. But you've actually got a beautiful kick as well. Yeah, I, I think probably for my career, the thing's been, everyone always talks about making good decisions with the footy. and Yeah, and having staying, time. Yeah, because of your basketball, basketball, which we've covered. Yeah. Pro- my best trait's probably my basketball background. So, <laughs> um, yeah, but as I said, I think all the guys this year have just, um, we're really even as a group. So um, even in that first quarter on the weekend, so many guys just did their bit, had their moments and it was, um, yeah, having 91,000 there or whatever the crowd was. Mm, it was huge. With, with a non-Victorian side playing, it was just unbelievable and the atmosphere was buzzing. The kids must be getting used to that now. And by the kids, I mean Ginevan and guys sort yeah. of 20 and under must be yeah. getting used well, to think, those yeah. massive crowds. Yeah, and I think we're very fortunate at our club that we get to play. Like we played Anzac Day, then we played around 21, I think it was Melbourne, mm. and then we played Carlton in the last game. So we get that experience with big crowds a fair bit. And then finals is different again because the pressure and – you know, on the weekend, it's it's like that finality about it. You know, if you lose, mm. you're done. Mm. So well, there must have been bit of also dudes who could have been a couple of years into the list, but because of the pandemic still hadn't really played any big football in front of big crowds. Yeah, well, even, um, you know, for, for us, our last finals game in Melbourne was the prelim loss to the Giants in 2019, and we haven't been back in Melbourne in finals since, and yeah. neither has anyone in the competition. So. It's a long time. Yeah, it is. And it's just amazing to be back at the home of footy with all the supporter base in Melbourne getting behind us. And as I said, these young guys are um, great driving that enthusiasm and excitement. And um, yeah, it was a fantastic win by, by our club. It must be amazing to walk up the race and know that you're about to play this gladiatorial sport in front of 90 odd thousand people, be the captain of the club. What's going through your mind as your foot hits the grass for the first time on game day? Yeah, I think when you just walk out, I'm not sure if you would have seen the vision, but our group's pretty sort of a happy, jovial mm. group. So we're all smiling and laughing just because when you yeah take it back to its roots, like we play because we love it. Yeah. And how good's this? We're about to walk out. This is our job in front yeah. of 90,000 and there was fireworks going off and smoke screens. and So you're literally you loving it. it. Oh, yeah. We're laughing and just smiles everywhere. Just like, it's unbelievable. I know we could we should be tense or whatever because it's a you know big game for our club and all that. But it's just when you strip it right back, we're about to play a game we love with each other mm. in front of ninety one thousand. It's a pretty good opportunity. So we were just grateful for that opportunity. And then now it's about going out there having fun, but executing what we know how to do. Who's surprising you in the playing group? Who not in, not in a you know overt way, but who's the one, who? Are there some kids where you're just going, "Geez, that guy's going well." Oh, I think all our younger guys like Ginevan. Nick Dacos, Isaac Quainor, their ability to stand up in finals games. And I, I guess it's a credit to our coaching staff and our club of how we've prepared guys throughout the year that, you know, our brand stacks up. And I feel like we've played the last two weeks of almost the best football we've played this season. And I feel like we're still getting better and better and our brand stacks up. We're confident. Um, Good pressure. But, yeah. And our pressure mm. game is really strong. And that's that's the fascinating thing about sad day for us is it's, I think it's the best two pressure sides in the comp playing each other. <sighs> so yeah, it's almost like we've, we know what to expect and both sides will know what's coming because you sort of train that way anyway. So it's going to be a good game. Uh, mm. You're getting 14,000 tickets, did we do? Of, of the 48 at the SCG, I think 14,000 are immediately allocated to Collingwood members. But then it might spill into more depending on no, which city ones. there'll be a few sneaky Collingwood people get yeah, out. Don't imagine, worry about I imagine that. there'll be a few people climbing yeah. the fence if they're Collingwood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Finding a way to get in. But you've travelled in finals. You won a very famous final only a couple of years ago over in Perth. The, the Collingwood group seems to travel really well. Do you, do you have confidence going up to Sydney that you're going to be able to perform? Yeah, and I, yeah, I, I definitely got confidence. And I, it's sort of, um, it's a good thing we played there, I think four weeks ago or five weeks yeah. ago, because we learned a lot playing on that ground. We didn't play very well. We didn't handle the ground very well. And 
um, to, to be able to get back there four weeks later and then have another crack at them because they really outplayed us that day. And yeah, we know the, um, how big this challenge is going to be. They played extremely well. Week one of the finals, their last six or seven weeks of the season has been awesome. So we know the challenge in front of us, but yeah, we're looking forward to, to meeting that head on. A bit mm. of a twilight game, is it, Will? Yeah, 4.45, I think. Yeah, it's always been that. Yeah, the it? last few yeah, years. Yeah. I remember going, I think it was 2017, I went and watched um, Richmond GWS at the MCG in yep. that twilight slot, and it was just amazing sitting there in the crowd. And um, yeah, I think it's so you don't have to play another night game and keeps the recovery time between the two prelim final winners pretty close. Yeah. And are you creatures of habit as a club? Is it the same hotel? Is it the same time that lunch comes? Is it the buses down there at 20 yeah. past one? Is it yeah. all of that? Yeah, everything's the same. So, um, you know, even this week of training and prep, everything's the same. There's no point trying to pull the rabbit out of a hat now and try and do something different yeah. or no. um, give us a big swanky hotel to stay at or whatever it is. So it's just normal for us and we, you, yeah, we look forward to getting up there. You're not sharing a room with someone, are you, for God's sake? No, no, we don't. <laughs> well, I used to share when I was younger when we started, used to share rooms. And yeah. I shared with Anthony Rocco, who could snore the house down. <laughs> yeah, he's a big, <laughs> big about unit. 19, yeah. and he turned the lights off at about 9 o'clock. It was pitch black at 9 o'clock. He said, it's bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yes, Dad. <laughs> it's bedtime. <laughs> Anthony's <laughs> called it. Yeah, yes, Dad. And then uh, I, I laid there listening to his snore, and then I thought, I'm just going to pay for my own room. Yeah, forward. great, Dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good result. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, let's come back and talk more footer. Scott Pendlebury with us this morning, Marty. Oh, William's showing me a wonderful stat here, Scott, that you'll move into equal 10th uh, having played 28 finals. And if you win, you'll move into equal 7th with Lee Matthews, Wayne Schimmelbush and Bruce Dool. Mm, there we go. That's Top pretty 10. impressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, absolutely. You want to play a lot of finals football. And yeah. Yeah, it's um, extremely fortunate that I've, I've played, you know, in, in as many as I have and as, wouldn't mind getting to 7th. Means mm. I'll win this weekend. Yeah, yeah, that'd be massive, wouldn't it? And then, of course, without getting too far ahead of ourselves, you've got to beat Sydney at home, which will be a tough challenge, given that they are a pressure team. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, they're um, yeah, I think everyone sort of, so yeah, it's funny. It's sort of almost like a lot of people in their first week they were like Melbourne will beat them, but Sydney are pretty good. Mm. It's like no one really, I don't know. It's like so like people haven't really put a lot of credit on their name yet, but they've been flying under the radar for the last six or seven weeks, maybe because of, you know, Geelong won 13 in a row, then we mm. won 11 out of 12 or mm. whatever it was. But they've, they've been, been playing, plotting yeah, along. they've been playing as good a football as anyone. Um, and then up there on their home deck, it's going to be um, a big challenge, but one I'm looking forward to. Yeah, it'll be a massive game. Um, let's swap briefly to the other side of the draw, draw where William's never been. He's walking on air at the moment with mm. Brisbane through to play Geelong. That'll be a belting game too. Yeah. Friday night, William. Yes, MCG. MCG. Jared Berry, did you get off? <laughs> oh. What do you think? What, what do you think on that incident? Um, yeah, I sort of seen at the time and it is, yeah, I, I feel for him because it's when someone's got the, their elbow in your head pushing you into yeah. the ground, yeah. I know if I was in his shoes, you're trying to grab or do whatever you can. It's almost like you're trying, you know, when you're a little kid, you're trying to pull him over you and get yeah. him in a headlock. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know if I'm it like to me, anything, really, nah. but I just thought he was trying to grab like jumper, hair, whatever you can because you just get yeah, off. Him. It yeah. felt like a natural reaction to push him away, and yeah, yeah. it was unfortunate. Yeah. He and I've heard people say eye. like, um, you know, he knew exactly what I was doing there, and I was like, yeah. let me put my forearm in, <laughs> in your, your yeah. in your in cheekbone, your, drive yeah. it into the ground, and then see how calculate. You like that little kid, you know, when you get pinned by you your just older react. brother, you just yeah. get that rage fit, mm. and you just want to. Whatever you can to get him off me. So, do you think provocation um, should be a defence in incidents like that? Oh, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard because it's like where do you where do you draw the line if that's you know if that can come into it? But yeah, to me, I was just like, yeah, he's just. I thought he was just doing whatever he can, like trying to reach for like the neck of the jumper. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, he got him near the eye. But I don't know if he actually eye gouged him. It's just he was trying to do whatever he could. It looked like to get yeah him off because it'll be yeah. interesting to see where that yeah. one falls. Yeah, I know. I think he, he got a week, didn't he? Yeah, yeah he's got yeah, a week. So. Officially challenged it. Yeah, so I'll be, um, they've got a, did they challenge one recently? Oh, they did Rainer, didn't they? Rainer, that didn't work. Yeah. yeah. Take two. Yeah. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Try again. You might as well roll the dice. Yeah, You've yeah, got nothing to lose. hundred percent. We just yeah. spoke about Joe Danaher as well, of course, missing the game for the birth of his first child. Have you ever had an incident like that when you were in a club or has No, any... I had, um, yeah, our son Jax was born, I think it was like around 16 or 17 or whatever. And we played in Sydney and then he was born like two days later. So going up, I was like, this could be. Yeah. yeah, touch and go, but um, yeah, it worked out. I remember though, it's like the second quarter or third quarter. I was on the bench and I had to go to the toilet. So, but there you have to like run all the way around the ground to get to the toilet. It's good planning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Sydney. So everyone in the commentary was like, "Oh, he's off." 
He's he's leaving. He's like he must have got yeah. the phone Baby's call. Baby's on its way. I was just going to have a little wee and then yeah. quickly run back. And How annoying up. to have yeah. to run around. Yeah, and it wasn't, honestly, wasn't thought out well, but yeah. No. Uh, so uh, Geelong, Brisbane, Geelong look good. I mean, I know you had a belting game against them, but they do look strong, don't they? Yeah, they yeah they are the the best side in the comp for a reason. And but yeah, pre- prelim finals just have a funny way um, of Particularly always being Geelong yeah, in prelim tight, finals. tight games no yeah. matter what, and then. Yeah, because the, there's just everyone knows what you're playing for. You're playing for a chance in a granny. And um, I also think it was equally big for Brisbane to sort of play the way they did in that second half and mm. just sort of break that MCG hoodoo. I know they would say it's not real, but every time you lose, it sort of adds to it. So, mm. yeah, it's going to be um, yeah cracking games of football. And um, the reason they're so exciting is because we all know what's on the line. Have you had a chance to have a look at um, Melbourne, Brisbane? The. Yeah. I assume you watched it live on oh, Friday night. Yeah, yeah. I watched. Yeah, they um, just seemed to fall. I watched the first half. I always watch the first half, and then go to bed, and then mm, yeah. sort of at half time, I was like, "Oh, I think Melbourne have sort of got this. They'd sort of strangled Brisbane enough." Yeah. And then woke up the next morning and had to do a double take when I checked the score because <laughs> I, mm, yeah. I just thought Melbourne had sort of they slowed them right down. And then yeah, and then Brisbane come back, and I watched the second half the next morning. And aren't you yeah, tempted they, to have it on on the telly in bed? Nah, I don't even know where the TV remote is. Yeah. <laughs> I've got some sort of monastic yeah, no yeah, cheat yeah. day, no TV in the bedroom yeah, yeah, yeah. life, which I don't understand. Sounds, yeah, it sounds pretty boring, doesn't it? You're yeah. a yeah. very different life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very different, different lives, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is why you're the captain of Collingwood and I'm not. Um, mate, thank you so much for coming in this year. We may see you again. I hope we do, uh, but Absolutely. we may not. But thank you so much for your time no, it's this been year. Fun. It's really been a real it. revelation for us as a show, and we appreciate your time, mate. No worries. Thanks. Go well on the weekend. Scott Pendlebury on the Marty Sheargold Show.